Previously on The Great Ace Attorney. <laughs> Look, Pat, that crazy job was like, what? Haha, <laughs> makes me laugh. I will go over and make love on top of his dead Japanese body. The f is wrong with you guys? Jesus! Okay, seriously, the casual racism is starting to get ridiculous, guys. You need to calm it down. Oh my dead lifeless body? Seriously, Pat? They were better than that! Nope, I'm hungry more! And now, back to grunting it, people! Hello! Sticko B! Back with some more of the Great Ace Attorney! When we last left off... Oh my god! Ah, oh, tugging at my heartstrings, man! Oh, oh, that was so sweet. It was such a sweet moment with uh, with uh, Rolla and, and Pat, and seeing the reason he had moved the body, and it was it was really good. I I I really enjoyed that. That was just super well executed, and just oh my god, just filled me with all sorts of emotions. And then of course we have Daddy Zeke's here, showing why he's a champ over there, saying no, you're gonna still have your freaking job, and even saying Joan, get your fat ass down here. All right, get off that cherry stand. You murdering psycho fuck! Oh my god, fucking Zeke's, dude. Zeke's. I'm, I'm gonna guess he's like, seeing as this is a duology, right? I'm gonna bet he's still gonna be the same main prosecutor in the second game. I hope he is, because, like, I feel like, I mean, we really have one more case with, probably with him, right? Before this is over? And that's not fucking nearly enough, alright? I don't have nearly enough Van Zeke's in my life. Not just what, three cases? Fuck that. I need like 20, I need 20 more cases with Van Zeke's, alright? Maybe, maybe then I'll have had my fill, but probably not. God damn, everyone in the comments is so thirsty for fucking Zeke's and his big ass legs. That includes me, by the way. But I asked you guys um, about your opinions on the first case, and there was a kind of a wide array. I will say, I don't think I saw anybody who disliked it as much as I did. Uh, I think the range was between uh, mediocre to a few people who liked it, to a few people who thought it actually was really good. Um, and I thought actually I'd highlight today uh, a comment that said who actually really liked it, and that was uh, Jojo32161, who last episode said, Personally for me, I do really like the first case of DGS. I think it's my third favorite first case behind Ace Attorney Investigations 2 and Apollo Justice. A big reason for that is actually a reason I enjoy a lot of the cases within this game, and that it was a crime you could really not pull off within the modern day. The type of poison being a good example. Career is a real poison, but the Japan people of Japan had no way to detect it, so it might as well not exist to them. Another thing I really liked about the case was watching Ryu slowly evolve over the course of the case, going from nervous guy who can't even make a very audible death slam to a slightly confident not attorney. One other thing I enjoyed was watching how the politics affected the case, with Japan bending over backwards to fix someone quick, the investigation being handled fairly well by Hosonaga but preventing them from thoroughly doing his job, and the killer basically getting away because she knew she was safe from the start. Heck, she even brazenly destroyed evidence in court. I can agree the case could stand to be better, but would have liked them to use a multi-witness questioning mechanic more than once, especially since they bothered to have more than one witness on the stand at all times, and I agree that the last bit of the state co contradiction was a weird roundabout way to prove that they were swapped and padded out at the end of it. Otherwise, it was a really solid case for me, and it was just a really good introduction for the new characters and setting for the game. And that's good. I mean, that's a, that's a really good argument, I think, uh, JoJo. I think personally for me, I think my favorite first cases have been definitely Paul Justice uh, and Trials and Tribulations. Um, I do. Th it's certain investigations too did have a very good beginning case, but th and that one also I think was a good example of a, a good first case that didn't borrow too too much from the previous game, right? Like, I mean, there was still a little bit of uh, you know sequelitis where it was basing some things off the first game, but it wasn't. It was still felt very much its own separate thing, you know, involving the president. And I think I, I do agree for the most part with your with your comment here. I think some of the things that maybe bother you just a little bothered me maybe more than that. A lot of you sort of point out you think the problem, the main reason why I disliked it so much was how it, I was really craving something different, and that was very much more of the same thing. And I think that's probably a good reason why I did dislike it so much. I think you're probably right. By this point, I was just, I was just dying for something different. I felt disappointed when I played it and saw that this was still the same thing. That said, like you said, the ending was incredibly stretched out. That steak thing was ridiculous. I mean, honestly, I feel like the, the case itself sh could have been cut in half, you know? Like, it was the longest first case of any of the games I've played previously, and it just, to me, it didn't add anything new to it, so it just made it a big freaking slog. So yeah, the the the, the politics between Japan and uh, England was really interesting. That was definitely the best part. But everything else just felt kind of stretched out. I, I mean, even like, 
uh, the stuff with Naruto, while I did like seeing him uh, grow slowly, it was it was very slow. And I, I get it. It probably made it was it, it would be a little more realistic that way. If he went too fast, it wouldn't make much sense. But I don't know. I guess I, I guess I would have I would have liked to either be sh make it shorter and then make his growth less noticeable, and then have him grow more the next case instead of you know, having him be relatively competent by the end. I don't know, just just something to have made that case shorter. Also, I think things being a slog and feeling like that it being something that you're not really enjoying a lot, it gets expounded a bit when you're let's playing it, you know? It's like, oh my god, I, I, the first five episodes of this were the, for the, the first case of the game. It's like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I just wanna go with this. I do realize my situation is probably maybe a bit different than some than some of you guys but i do honestly see your uh you mean you make a good argument dojo and you're absolutely right with um all your points in terms of the, the positive things about that case but yeah like i said i didn't see too many of you guys really dislike it as much as i did so I'm maybe more of a just me problem but dojo thank you so much for sharing your comment with everyone i was nice seeing uh arguments for or against the first case and i don't know just just seeing other people's opinions on it so and it's for that reason you are comment of the day but that said, uh, everything after that has been just freaking great in my opinion. Like, all these cases that have come afterwards have just been so much more interesting. So much more engaging. I think Van Zeeks did help quite a bit, although I still like Case 2, even though that didn't actually introduce Zeeks. But we had Holmes there, too. I think that was the other thing. I don't think there was enough, like, interesting characters in the first case, either. Like, okay, we had a Sogi. He was cool, but he was incapable, but... That was kind of it. And Naruhodo, I we just didn't know enough about him yet, just other than he wasn't very good at it. And fucking Gasp and Pain, Max Pain, Bajillion, Samurai Pain was just the same dude we've been going up against a million times. And the bad guy was just kind of, eh. But this shit, man, this is what it gets me out of fucking bed. So, all right, so we've got Joan up there. It, it's looking like, just from the outset of this, it does seem like this might end up being an accidental murder. Well, not murder, I'm sorry, she's not dead. Actual, actual stabbing where she tossed it out the window, maybe the lady was bending over to pick up the book and got stabbed in the back when the knife fell down. The tip of the knife is broken off. I'm wondering, was it like, did it break off when it hit the window? I don't think that would be the case. I'm trying to figure out what would have caused the tip to break off. Because it'd have to be some big impact to break the tip off a fucking metal knife. But I also think, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking there's gonna be another level or another layer to this case. Like that seems like that might be the answer, but we still don't know if this is really the lady that she says she is, I, I would be surprised if there's like some like identity theft going on here. Like this is some like random person that's not really Viridian Green. I don't know. That's just the part that I, I don't know where it's what, what that's tied into. But all right, so witness your name and occupation. Yes, sir. My name is um, John Garrett. Yes, my occupation. Um, at the moment, I suppose I'm a juror. It looks like even she's confused about whether she's a housewife or a maid. Henceforth, the court expects your testimony. Is that acceptable? <laughs> yes, my lord. <laughs> God, it's fucking cheek physics, I tell you what. On the evening of the crime, something had transpired in the Gerdep home. You should tell us the entire truth. Do not try to withhold even a single detail. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. Oh, trembling cheek physics. Uh, what's the matter, Joan? There's nothing to be scared of now, said her husband. Yep. Well, I'm be scared of now. Do you? You were here all along? That's right, it was me, your husband, all along. I was with her at the time of the crime. Yes, our brain has far alongside you, Joan. Look, the, fate, the, the smack on my face is healed up. But, dear, what about your leg? Oh, please. I'm fine. I can't let you suffer up here all alone, can I? Dear. Even though you beat me up on a regular daily basis. But whatever. Got my little medal on, too. I presume you must be John, Mr. John Kiernan, then. <laughs> Sir, 4th Northumberland, Fusier's Battalion, Captain of the 3rd Platoon. I survived countless battles. Now that I'm retired, I live a quiet life here in London. It seems you are subjected to your wife's costly barrage in a very in your very own home. <laughs> well, suppose you can see it that way. A juror standing as a wit as witness it's the first time since the founding of our British courts. First time is since freaking ever. It's an absolutely unprecedented situation. However, as today's final witnesses, you two are ordered to give your testimony. Now I have to imagine that every case that isn't 
just isn't an Ace Attorney at all. Like, all the crap that came before this, they're all just regular trials, boring as fuck. But then the moment the game starts, colorful characters are showing up, tossing shit, crazy things happening. The judge is so freaking confused, he doesn't know what's going on. Do I say something? I mean, the guy's smashing my incredibly expensive table with his leg, and other guy's slicing shit with his finger. Somebody could die, but, but it's just so awesome and interesting, I can't stop them. Just fine regarding what happened in your home as the crime took place. Sir, loud and clear, my lord. Loud and clear, my lord. Okay. The War of the Garadim Home. I forget the reason, but my wife and I started fighting. A can of sand fell over. I had the carpet on fire. I put on the fire and ran it to open a window. Meanwhile, I took aim and threw everything I could at this poor man. There are plenty of knives in our room, so we wouldn't notice if one went missing. The weapon was one of our knives. I want you to prove it with evidence. Okay. Definitely gonna need to do some pressing to get to get the thing that I need to press at the very end there. Hmm. It appears that your home really was the scene of a blood ba bloody battle. On the contrary, it appears to have been more of a one-sided assault. <laughs> I think we should we could arrest your wife, by the way. I'm forced to admit that my platoon was at a perilous disadvantage. If our armistice had been delayed by even a minute, we'd have been engulfed in flames. But really, this old man was pressed to say, it's the brief moments like those that tow the line between life and death on the battlefield. I've never heard of a married couple's argument described like that. However, with just this testimony, it'll be difficult to produce evidence of the weapon. They say that in battle, Man finds himself lost in the fog of war. He loses sight of all else. Perhaps there is little point in demanding any further testimony from these two. I'm getting the same feeling. That's what you believe. The two of us will have to reach the final truth within this cross-examination. Yeah, you're right. The moment of truth and justice. Now, defense, begin your cross-examination. I'm almost feeling like the it's possible that... This thing with Freddy and Green, if it isn't solved in this case, it might be carry over into the, the final case. Alright, the War of the Garadep Home. So, I can't remember the reason that he and his wife start fighting. Do we? I don't know if I actually got any of that stuff that was in there. Yeah, I don't think I got added, so... I think I'm just going to have to press him, maybe, and maybe, maybe now we'll finally get added. I believe he told us the reason yesterday. Yes, if I recall correctly. It all started with a letter wedged inside a book. That's it. It apparently contained a passionate message addressed to Mr. Garadep. And that secret of his was discovered by his wife. As a result, he became victim to many repeated slaps to the face. Terrifying, for sure. A hell of his own making. <laughs> even even Ben Sticks over there is like, damn. I feel for you, brother. <laughs> I was trying to act like I forgot, but you just had to tell everyone. And some of what you said wasn't even right. Oh my god, look, he's over there trembling too. He's fucking in fear. He's got the fucking tea kettle again. It never runs out of tea for some reason. Is that so? I think the reason for their fight goes deeper than we will ever know. So, what happened after this violent barrage of slapping? Okay, that, I guess that was... I thought we might get some, uh... Like that letter? Is that not gonna play anything? Yeah, I, okay, I, I feel like this, it... I think that and maybe the the other lady too. If it's not this case, it's gonna carry over to the next one. Uh, our candlestick fell over, lighting the carpet on fire, but the fire ran to an open window. To open the window. The fire also spread to the furniture, right? Eh, mostly calling to my, my things, for whatever reason. And I close my bookshelf and chat. Conveniently, we had water for bathing at, t at the time, so we used that to extinguish the blaze. That sounds like a difficult situation. Our house on the third floor, that the city water line still have been connected there. During the afternoon, we had to go to the water trough to get water. We always tell our tenants that they can't use water during the evening, but apparently that mustachio Japanese man was buying water for himself. You mean the defendant, Saseki? He says he gets some kind of exchange student allowance from his homeland. It must be nice to be able to enjoy black tea in the evening. I'm not sure nice is the word I would use to describe a situation. <laughs> it's under the impression that he used his whole allowance on books. In any case, I threw water all over the burning room. 
Okay. Uh, meanwhile, I took aim and threw everything I could at this poor man. You did this even while your carpet and furniture were on fire? To be honest, at the time, I was more concerned with throwing and killing. Oh, throwing and killing! See, you know, the philosophy behind the scissors of toss is totally different. If they happen to snap their neck in the process, that's totally their fault! It's like she can read my mind. <laughs> Try to remember something, something for me. Was a knife among the things you threw? I honestly don't remember, but I'm not that much of a monster. Bread, cabbage, garlic, towels, sponges, napkins. Oh. We got something to say, mister. I don't know about that. Excuse me, Mr. Garadip. Ah, oh, look at this pipe. It's so cool. Hey! Mr. Garadip! Oh, 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 oh. What, 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 what do you want? Is there something that caught your attention about your wife's testimony just now? Well, if you must know, my memory does differ from her. Just, uh, it's just a tad. She mainly threw hard, heavy objects, books, fire irons, bricks, so on. What? Not only that, she only had impeccable aim. Oh god, here we go. Joan! We're in a courtroom! Joan, why don't you apply that thing? Why are you pouring it in my pipe? I can't smoke that! You can smoke on this motherfucker! She takes out a fucking revolver and starts shooting at him. Joan, no, not here! Okay, seriously, she's got a magnum revolver and she's shooting at her husband. We still don't think she could be the killer? I don't know. This is all pretty normal here. Oh, yeah, my wife does this to me all the time. What is wrong with this country? Oh, goodness me. I'm so sorry, dear. I'm so sorry, master. Come on, you drop the dumb facade already. She's still doing this? Someone needs to take that tea kettle away. But you see, there's no possible way I could throw heavy things like that. Well, if you take a look at, at this, you get the idea. What happened to your pipe? Oh, there, that's true. There is just like a little, uh, little wrapping around it. At the time, I was holding my pipe like so. When I was subjected to that horrifying barrage, it flew out of my hand. I actually stepped on it while I was trying to pick it up. It split right in two. Oh. The pipe just broke in half? Some hard object hit my, hit my pipe. Okay, out of my hand. I patched it up with some tips. Quick fix. Honestly, dear, you really like to make such a fuss out of the little things in life. Could the knife have hit it, and then that's what caused it to chip? I mean, that'd, be a, that'd be a hard ass pipe. I wonder if Mr. Garrett's testimony just now was important at all. No, not at all. Of course it was. Yeah! The defense believes that there's profound meaning in that last statement. Igiari. There's only one bit of knowledge to glean from the retired soldier's statement. Defying your furious wife will only result in a broken heart and a broken pipe. That's all there is to it. You will find no other meaning, profound or otherwise. <laughs> the deep words of Daddy Zeke's. Hmm, indeed, any husband will already know this fact. Daddy Zeke's forever a bachelor. I'm not too sure about that. Will you at least allow us to take a look at the broken pipe? Of course. Oh, mine. There you, there you go again. You're always going out of your way to please younger women. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you two have a very volatile relationship. Very well. Of course, I'll accept this as evidence. Mr. Garrett's pipe appears to have fallen on the floor and broken during the argument with his wife. Okay. Hope you didn't mind my sudden intrusion. It seemed a shame for your claim to result in nothing but den a denial. Oh, no. I really appreciate it. Just take a look at this evidence that she went out of her way to get it for me. Now, witness, you may continue your testimony. Tell us more about those knives in your room. All right, so have a little looksy doodle. Uh, oh my God, there it is. Yep, found it. Found it. Man, you did not. How did that thing not like fall out? Or I guess it's kind of. Oh, it's kind of jammed in there, isn't it? I did not hear it rattle around in there, man. Huh, I think I saw just saw something reflecting inside the, the pipe. Yes, I saw it too. Looks to be something stuck inside the bowl of the pipe. I'll turn upside down shake. Oh, what is this? It's a metal fragment. If I had to guess. Or if I had to guess, it's probably broke off some kind of blade. A blade, huh? 
This is what I think it is? Could a demon be? Okay, here we go. Got a little chip there. I also check that as well. There's a bit of pipe missing here. Seems to have been damaged recently at that. Closer inspection, it actually has little graze grazes everywhere. It must be well used. You know, if you think about it, maybe something is only well used once it's been scratched a lot over a long time. As for this missing piece, the fact that the wound is so new is starting to make me wonder. Starting to wonder. Okay, I think this is uh, what, I think what we need here, right? I want you to prove it to me. Prove it to me right now. Do it right, freaking now. Igiati! Yeah! Mr. Garadep, could I get you to take a look at this? I, I can't really see it. All the way over there. Huh? Back in the platoon, they called me Hawkeye John. But that was long, long time ago. Nowadays, even when I'm reading my favorite book by the fireplace, I tend to do things like mistake the letters B, D, P, and Q. My word, maybe you should try putting yourself in the witness's shoes, attorney. That does make it sound like you have some eye problems. <laughs> I can see it fine. Just what is this? Some sort of tiny metallic shard. It might just be the tip of a broken blade. Yeah! It may be tiny, but it's absolutely an important piece of evidence. How very intriguing. Where did you happen to pick this up? It was stuck inside Mr. Gator's pipe. <laughs> my, my pipe? Where in the world did you that get it? That get in there? Well, what is the point of presenting this tiny little shard? You can't possibly be saying that it's related to the case at hand, can you? I can. Oh yeah! Stop doing that! It'd be funny if I left the diddle just like. Just like John Garrett over there left big old red marks on my face afterwards. Now I've got my war paint on. Indeed, I am. What? If you consider the shard alongside another piece of evidence, I think the truth about the stabbing will come clear once and for all. So yeah, that was definitely the knife that was used to stab. I can see that our attorney is becoming very confident in his answers. Now, now then, defense, I order you present your evidence. What evidence combined with this tiny shard will reveal the truth of this case? Behold. It's the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look at it carefully, you'll see that the tip of the blade is chipped just slightly. There are entire hordes of thieves roaming the London city center with shoddy knives. A, cheap as, a knife as cheap as this one would break as soon as it struck bone. That's true, and the tip of this knife would likely still be stuck inside the victim's body, yes. Yari, Yari. However, that is not the case. Come on, man, you should see where I'm going with this already. The broken tip of this knife was the metal shard all along. It was in Mr. Gator's pipe. Ah! Ah! Oh, my heart. Oh, my God, that was a dramatic... Uh, fucking taking a back pose for freaking Van Ziggs. Oh, my heart, no. Not my heart, how dare you. My heart like Dar Harbar. What's the matter, Lord Van Ziggs? This is absolutely absurd. No, I've got a heart condition. The knife with the broken tip. And the shard. They fit together perfectly. What? What in blazes? They form one single big knife. <laughs> order, order, order. This is some sort of Japanese black magic. Uh, I got my stick face on. It's no black magic, I'm afraid. On the contrary, one might call it a miracle. A miracle? Looks like even Prosecutor Van Zeeks realized the truth. Attorney, explain the meaning of this immediately. It's not that complicated, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Um, just what I was trying to say is probably the exact time that this shark got lodged in this pipe. I guess. That was made clear during the Garadep's testimony. At the time I was holding my pipe like so, when I was subjected to that horrifying barrage, and it fell, flew out of my hand. Some hard object hit my pipe, knocking it out of my hand. Uh-oh. This can't be. 
The fight between the Garrett up couple happened at the exact same time as the crime. In her rage, Mrs. Garrett up threw a knife at her husband. Then, when the knife collided with Mr. Garrett's pipe instead of flying, the knife's tip broke off. Ah! And then, the shard that broke off the knife lodged itself inside the flying pipe. How? It's like, really is some sort of miracle. It's the only conceivable way the shard could have ended up inside the pipe. Then the knife, now without its tip, flew through the open window. Ah. Thus, this broken weapon descended from the Gerdam's home and stabbed the victim in the back. No, no way. Ah! <laughs> She's staying out a little box. Yari. Who said that? Who do you think? It's me with my holy grail. Mm. Yummy in my tummy. What a decadent demonstration. You piled up countless niggling details and proudly presented the resulting heap of dust. That's a very Japanese trick, isn't it? What is your problem now? Unfortunately for you, your demonstration is nothing more than pretense. If you're wondering why... Ah! You can talk to my motherfucking leg! <laughs> talk to the gum on the bottom of my foot! It's because there exists a fatal contradiction in your own assertions. Huh? What? I'm gonna bet it's gonna be like, well, if she was walking, how would it get her in the back or get her in the head, right? And they're gonna prove that she was bent over. Lord Van Zix, explain yourself! What contradiction have you found in his assertion? It's honestly very simple. The victim was stabbed in the back by this knife. Yep. The back? Ah! ah. Ow! Yeah, that's right! He's absolutely right! Oh my god, fuck! What's the matter, darling? I like totally unfazed by that. You're certainly so jumpy! Try to remember the details of the case again. As the victim was walking along Briar Road, she was stabbed and collapsed, collapsed on the spot. The knife had descended from above within, within those circumstances. <laughs> then it would be inconceivable for the knife to land in her back. Ah! Ah! Yep, I had a feeling. Order! Order! Yeah, of course! That's totally it! The falling knife had stabbed her! Then it would be stuck in the very tip top of her head, of course! Then she would definitely be very dead! This would this would be a very different trial. But Wow, oh, Tony really climbed up climbed up! So that's it. I knew something was fishy about this. Well, what's the truth then? I know the truth. Alright, I get it. Indeed, the fences overlook something vital. You can't call it a logical conclusion if it has even a single contradiction. Attorney, your demonstration doesn't have a leg to stand on! Oh, that fucking. Uh, that monkey paw of his was like. Uh. I was so close to the truth! There shouldn't have been anything wrong with like the path I was on! But now, the way is closed off by a single contradiction! No. In other words. Sogi, is that you? No, it's me again, Naron. Oh, I really want to be a Sogi this time. I want my love for to come from beyond the grave to spur me on. Well, excuse me, Naron, you just got to stick with me, okay? We all know I'm the best fucking assistant in any of these games anyway. If we can resolve that contradiction, the path will be cleared once more. Suzuto! Listen up, Naron, Hodo. You've just been taken by surprise, and you've turned just a little bit pale. But if you're on the right path, then I believe there has to be an answer somewhere. Somewhere in the information recorded in the court record. Nah. It looks like our Japanese boy has finally run out of rebuttals. There is only one thing that your silence whispers to us. It says that you've accepted your own assertions as false. Oh my god, you can see the backside of his freaking robe is burnt too. Higiyari! No. It's time. The contradiction isn't because I'm wrong. It's just another challenge. Hmm. To make my case even more well honed. Oh my god, let me fight that slam. His face just goes straight through the fucking table. He's just that powered up. And then that's when Van Zeke knows he fucked up. He's like, 
Oh shit, he's transforming. <laughs> he's going even further beyond. You're not wrong. There's no way that a falling knife could stab an upright person in the back. That is, in a normal situation. What? What are you talking about, defense? A certain piece of evidence tells the story. It tells us how. A falling knife can end up in the victim's back. <laughs> what are you saying? What kind of nonsense trick is this? It seems this is the last time I'll have to say this today. Defense, how do you present your evidence? The moment of truth and justice has finally arrived. This is the final contradiction. If I can clear this up, then one final undeniable truth will remain. Here's the evidence that proves how the falling knife fell into the victim's back. Behold, this burnt ass book. <laughs> the fourth book, discovered on the scene of the crime, explains it all. This is it. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. This burnt book. That book was from the Garrett of Home, correct? If you take a look at this photo of the crime scene, it shows you exactly where the book was present at the scene. The victim was holding Mr. Garrett's book in, in her hand. However, if you recall, the constable testified that he placed the book in her hand. That would be referring to when he moved the crime scene to the opposite footpath, yes? About that. Patrolman O'Malley gave us a vital piece of testimony alongside that. But why did you leave this book in the victim's hand? Oh, well, well, that's just how I found it. When we ran over to the crime scene, the victim was holding on to this book. So when I moved her, I just left her the same as I found her, holding the book. In other words, the victim picked up that book by her own volition. So obviously, she picked it up before she was stabbed by the knife. That does make sense. When you've got a knife in your back, that's definitely not the time to be reading. So why, in the first place, did the victim pick up the book? Uh oh, I, I think I know. Oh, I feel kind of bad for Joe to see her troubling like that. It's like, aw. Oh. It is, this is a series of very unfortunate circumstances, which does seem to be a bit of a theme here, doesn't it? it the same way in case two, although case three, we don't really know what the answer was, so I can't really, I can't really comment there. Think I can imagine a reason why? <laughs> we know that this book fell from the landlord's flat on the third floor to the ground. Furthermore, it was almost exactly the same time that the incident occurred. Exactly. They were at the same time. The victim was walking through the foggy London night on the pavement of Briar Road. As she walked on, suddenly, a book fell right in front of her. <laughs> the book that I threw? Scared up, put yourself in your sh her shoes for a moment. Imagine you were walking along when suddenly a book fell before you. Well, I can't exactly imagine that happening, but I suppose I'd probably reach out my hand and I'd pick the, up the poor book up, of course. And that's our answer. She picked it up. Ah! Ah! A book fell from the sky in front of her, and of course, she reached out to pick it up. What do you think she might have looked like in this situation? Her back was pointed toward the sky, completely defenseless as she bent over. And in the next instant, while she picked it up... Ah, oh, dead! I mean, not dead! The knife following the book descended directly into her back. That's not all. Not far behind Viridian was another person walking on Briar Road. That would be the defendant, Suzuki Nasume. Uh, oh! What Suzuki witnessed at that moment was the victim suddenly collapsing to the ground in that wispy fog. He failed to see the knife falling from the sky. <laughs> in that case, the constable and his wife wouldn't have witnessed anyone else on the scene. And it's all because there was no criminal to flee the scene. Nah! This case is just a tragic accident. It's a result of a chain of coincidences on coincidences. 
That's the very truth of the stabbing of Viridian Green! Does that sound right, Garrett Epps? When you first revealed that knife, I started to realize... Maybe that's really what happened. D darling Joan. I know. Whether it was on purpose or not, doesn't really matter. What I've done is still a crime, right? I confess to it all. That night, as I was blinded by rage, I threw that book at my husband. And then I threw the knife, too. Dear. You don't have to say it. I know. Aw. I'm so, so sorry. I'm sorry. <gasps> I'm so sorry! But I did. I got you, old girl. Oh my god, you're heavy. Oh, that's so nice. He still went over and caught her. Like a fucking champion with his bad leg. Oh god! What a champ. Lord Van Zeex, how's Mrs. Garrett up doing? She was taken to a bed in emergency care. I'm told that the situation is hectic at the moment. But there shouldn't be any problems. Things will calm down soon. Unfortunately, they wrought this tragedy with their own hands. They will need the resolve to stand and face it together. I'm not sure if one might call this a dark cloud silver lining, but... According to a report from the hospital, the victim is on the road to recovery. It seems to be just a matter of time before she regains her senses. I still don't know a thing about her, huh? Still, it's great that she survived this ordeal. Yeah, you're right. And as for you, Defendant, Suseki Natsume. How did I get up here? Yes, sir! On behalf of the Ministry of Justice, I wish to issue an apology to you. That doesn't happen very often. Actually, it happens never. They just never fucking apologize to the people they brought up there. You journeyed to Great Britain from so far in order to study in peace. Yet we have only caused you immeasurable suffering. We are deeply sorry for this. I'm not. I cannot accept for the one who must apologize. It's me. Seki. That night, the poor young lady had fallen before my eyes. But in my hysterical horror, it would lay before me. I made a terrible mistake. What mistake? I thought that fine lady had died. Well, Patrolman Pat thought so as well. She did seem pretty dead, I guess. <laughs> she seemed pretty fucking dead. It has been a year since my arrival. I was still yet to acclimate to the life in the Imperial capital. My days were dismal. It's as if the spirits of the fog of London, damp and dreary, had come. Seki does seem like a really sensitive guy. What a poignant image. And it was the same then. I thought she was bewitched by the very same malevolent spirits. I know that dropping my books and fleeing the scene wasn't what I should have done. I I should have done nothing other than call a doctor and notify the police of what happened! As an exchange student, I've dealt a terrible blow to the trust between our great empires. Thus, I must offer my deepest apologies. No, you're right. You know what? You're going to jail after all. What? <laughs> Oh, you see, John is up on the, the juror stand now. As far as I can see, the essence of this case seems to be an apparition of an interwoven chain of misfortunes. Manipulated by this apparition, we were t ready to rush to a mistaken verdict. Lord Van Zeeks, and you, attorney who voyaged from Japan to the British Empire, you two are responsible for breaking that chain. Heck yes, yeah, son! Finally get some respect here! I do wonder, though, is Seki gonna get out of this alive? 
And it was based on a real dude. He got out of that country alive. So Sasaki should get out of here alive, right? Right? Oh, no. But no, he's not the one we're going to be worried about, though, right? So th the thing with McGundle's case is that we just couldn't come to... We didn't come to a solution. We didn't know who, do, who the killer was. But he was the, the most recent one, right? So he still died. I think... I think the one we need to worry about dying here is Seki. I think it might be Joan, actually. I don't know. It's, it's, is it whoever he tries, or is it whoever actually gets found guilty? And if it's not them, does it default to the other person? I, I don't know. Be curious to see who ends up possibly dying from the Grim Reaper's fucking curse. This was absolutely a model trial. Uh, thank you, my lord. Now, say this is the jury. Yes, my lord. Court has decided that now is the time for this trial to end. We request your final verdict. Speaking as the foreman, I only wish to arrive at a dignified verdict. The truth is often cruel, isn't it? I didn't think this would end with us losing a jar. I stand here now as well, Ice Messenger. It's about time. Not finally get to work, right? This will be a nice story for my grandchildren. Have I had the big old fat chunky chunk got stabbed in the doodle? Now, jurors, the time is coming. So present your final verdicts to the court. Your sight. Who died? Oh fuck! They're gonna like the game though when they do it. Oh fuck! Here it comes. Uh, the fires of lag compels you! Boo! I will now deliver the verdict to the defendant, Suseki Natsume. Not guilty! Let the confetti fly! <laughs> yes! Now we got good confetti. Hey, the frame rate came back up. Alright. Yay! Okay, we got an answer on that one at least. One more thing, defendant. Yes, my lord. You're now a free man once again. I hope you will endeavor to bridge the gap between our two cultures. And be sure that you never find yourself in this courtroom again. Never find yourself falsely accused of murder again. She's not dead, sir. Just get out of here. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. I sick and sue me. Do solemnly swear. I am so moved. Whatever. With this, today's trial comes to a close. Everybody in the courtroom, you all better get yourselves in a nice orderly fashion and walk very calmly out that door. You, you have, have learned, learned nothing, nothing, young, young Padawan. Padawan. Okay. I still think the Viridian thing is going to pull into something else, though, right? Uh, February 20th, 17 p.m., Old Bailey Defendant Lobby! Oh, substitute! Here comes the here comes the happy music, huh? Uh, oh, you mean me? Oh, of course I do. Are there any other substitutes here? I wouldn't really know. We've come a long way from substitute law student Naruhodo, haven't we? I would have preferred if we arrived at just Naruhodo instead. <laughs> oh, my name is finally himself to walk out. Art full of glee. Laugh loud and free. He seems really happy. I could tell since he said laugh. <laughs> it would be a lot easier to tell if he actually laughed, though. Oh, Substitute, you've really done it. You sa salvaged my life from the rubble. It wasn't me. You're free because you didn't hurt anyone. It's great that everyone else has come to see that, too. No, you see? You've got the wrong idea. Dear Substitute, toot! Y yes? I said this before, but... I never could come to love London. On the roads, I looked around and see only foreigners. In the sky, only brick skyscrapers. The birds look down on me from above. They point and laugh. Look at that dwarf. I think you're just imagining that. However, today, you'll pull me out of my tiny hole of depression. You stood on the grand stage against those Brits, and you didn't dare retreat. In equal battle, you fought with your worst to unveil the truth unknown. When I saw those great fireworks launched in the crown court, my heart cried for joy. A mankind is great! Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of surprised they do that indoors. Wouldn't that be a big fire hazard? And oh, God, the roof's on fire! Both grateful to hear you say that. 
My old friends in Japan will be delighted to hear about this misadventure when I go home. Huh? Go home? Uh, oh hey, I've been looking for you three. Uh, oh, hello there. Sorry to keep you waiting. I have to oversleep just a bit. And I brought my theme song, everybody. Here we go. <laughs> my, if it isn't Mr. Holmes. That's right. The hero waits to the last moment. And that's what I do. Whoa, that was close. Looks like I made it just in time. Um. <laughs> just in the nick of time. It looks like the court is about to be in session. I know you got this, Master Naruhodo. <laughs> That's right. Let's do this, Mr. Holmes. All right, I'll be up there. I'll be your new Maya, by the way. Get out of here, Susudo. What? <laughs> Actually, the trial just ended. What? How? I was in such a rush for nothing then. <laughs> ah, it, it's you, you, you damn monster! The Sherlock Holmes. Hmm? I'm sorry. Have we met? Have we met? This is Suseki. You do remember arresting him, right? Oh, that's right. I didn't recognize him. He's always hiding out in his little basement of a flat, or in those dark little, little jail cells. What's he doing in a brightly lit room like this? I had no idea who he was. He could be a little less rude. <laughs> God, savage is crap. Curse you, the Sherlock Holmes! It's all your fault that this happened to me. I've got... Yeah! I've got a whole mountain of things I need to say to you! No, no, wait. Sorry, I've got I've got it now. You must be. The man that ran off with the crime scene. You abandoned that poor victim. Huh? If you take her to a hospital, instead. Uh by now, she probably would have been awake again. But oh well, I figure it was inevitable for her to end up this way anyway. We're all the same, you know. Something like that is just too much of a fright. <laughs> uh, I'm honestly very sorry for what I did. Good. By the way, <laughs> you said there was a mountain of things you need to say. No, suppose not. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. You're just too funny for me to handle. Poor Su Suseki. Come on, look at the bright side. What a pleasant experience, right? And all for free. And from what I can see, you've been declared not guilty. Still not safe. Whatever do you mean? I knew it all along. I'm cursed! Cursed by these damnable spirits! And cursed by the Grumpy for himself! Uh, oh, Prosecutor Barack Van Zeeks. I'll never forget what I heard when that prosecutor is in the court. Even if you're not guilty, you're doomed to a terrible demise! No, no Suseki, you'll be fine. D huh? Even if some sort of unruly bringer of death appears before us. I, Suzuto, will not fail to keep you safe from, from harm! Mother by Susan, no toss! Oh, come on! What the? <laughs> Why always me? You'll get a taste of my special move. This is a no toss. What awesome power. You could at least warn me before you do that. Just... <laughs> I got all the air knocked out of it. Oh, I just broke my ass. So, Suseki, what are you going to do now? You mentioned going home a while ago. <laughs> Before long, I plan to go home to the Japanese Empire. Huh? It's been a whole year since I first arrived in the British Empire. Going to university, living on my professor's teachings, visiting the libraries and bookshops. I've come to this wonderful world of literature, along with the city I was born from. And I realized that my mission is to teach our empire about this culture. Suseki. Aw. So, put simply, you've gotten cold feet at the thought of the Grim Reaper's curse. Is that right? <laughs> no, you see, you got the wrong idea! The, the more I learn about, diff about literature, the more these strange emotions well up within me. When I return home, I wish to write something with my own two hands. Really? I'd love to read one of Suseki's novels someday. And he will. Unless they break, unless they break history here and have... 
the Grim Reaper's curse kill him. Now, Master Naruhodo and Miss Susito, what are your plans? Our plans? Are you going back to Japan with a mustachio gentleman? Why would we do that? We haven't even been in London for a week now. No, our trip has only just begun. It's only the start of our duology. Hmm. I suppose you've been staying at a hotel, then. Y yeah, I'm trying to find a cheap place to live before we go bankrupt. According to our calculations, our allowance will vanish entirely in about ten days. Oh! If you like, you're free to take my flat. Ah! Your room doesn't have any windows, right? And, oh, uh, it looks like somebody died in there. Oh, yeah, somebody did die in there. It was my soul! Yes, that's true, but the floors and walls and ceiling are all in perfect order. Ah! And there's more! You'll never be alone because spirits will be there to curse you! And there's a cat! Spirits? Indeed, when you're so sound asleep at night, a spirit suddenly rings your neck. What a refreshing way to start the day! I'll need some time to think about it first. We're not doing it, Susito. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun! I want to go live there! Okay, fine, you go live there, Mr. Holmes, you weirdo! I've got a proposal for you two. How would you like to stay at my home for a while? Oh my god, here we go! Yes! Oh my god, does that mean I get a little pink-haired sister? Um, I I guess. Yay! Yay! I get a little pink-haired sister too! Yay! Yay! Oh, I guess you met my assistant. I don't think I was even aware of that. Why are you so excited? Because she's awesome! I always found her to be rather bland, but okay, whatever. Tea soon, I suppose. Really? She's got a fancy-ass house, too. You see, our home is a bit of a vacancy. Even if you just be taking the attic. Can you really call that a vacancy? <laughs> we talked it over with the landlord this morning, and now Iris is cleaning it up. You should come as soon as you can. I doubt you have any luggage, right? Oh my, what a lovely proposal! We get to live in the attic of our famous detective's home! Oh god, you've been hanging around Suseki too much, Susto. So many emotions are welling up inside me. Uh, we graciously accept! I don't suppose I even have the option to look elsewhere now. <laughs> I don't want to, though. It's attic smells funny. All right, it's decided then. Tonight, Iris will be flexing her cooking muscles for a big welcome dinner. Mr. Saseki, you're free to come over as well. Uh, huh? mm -hmm. I do appreciate the offer, but I'm uh, terrified of you. <laughs> that, that night, she gets arrested for murder again. Well then, I'll be working on the paperwork for Saseki's acquittal. Suto looks so excited. Aww. Suzuto is, is so freaking adorable. Just like all these characters. Substitute. I knew I was right to choose you. I'm so, so glad that I could meet someone like you in this foggy city. I feel the same way, Suseki. It's just sad that we already have to say goodbye. I've realized that I belong in Japan. Substitute, one day, I swear, we will meet again. Of course. If I can call myself a full-fledged attorney by then. Perhaps by then, I'll have the air of a competent author. All right, you two, our coach has arrived. We should get going soon, Master Arahodo. Okay, Mr. Holmes. Hopefully, Mr. Suseki will be acquitted in time to make, make it for dinner. And so, the curtain closed on Suseki's trial. The three of us boarded a coach and set off for Baker Street. Oh, okay, we still got some more. Uh, February 20th, 4.41 p.m. Attic! We got a stove, a shovel, a mop. So this is it. It's our new office. Our new, our own office, huh? I like that. It's got a nice ring to it. Ain't this place stinks like freaking hell? Oh, God, it's a rat! It does. It's like a dream come true. Aw. Oh. Do you see this, Soki? It's only a small one. But I feel like I've come one step closer to filling your dream. Soki! What do you think, you two? Do you love it, or do you love it? <laughs> oh my god! Holy, who is this big, tall hunk of burning love? Ah! Susan just, just immediately fucking orgasms like, ah! <laughs> Sister, uh, so sorry, I just, 
I just, just, oh my god! Mr. Holmes, you need to walk around like that more often! Because you just look so good! Son, ah! Oh my god, he's looking some serious fine boy. Mm -mm. Mr. Holmes, thank you so much for this. It's a charming little room. I'm possibly overwhelmed with glee. It's, it's actually kind of cool seeing him in just like a different outfit like this. That's great. Iris and I are glad you're here too. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's Iris. Come on, everyone. It's almost time for supper. When Uncle Suzuki gets here, we're having a big party. Ah, uh, Miss Iris, we'll just love to help you prepare. Okay, it's Susie. You can make the salad. All right. Oh my God, this is so cute. We're gonna be one big happy family. I love it. Suzuki better not be dead. So, how does it feel, Master Arahodo? You've established your very own office in London. I can't stop trembling from the excitement. Along with the thought of what might be winning for us in the city. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt when I opened my own office here. That is, till I came to know of the darkness lurking in this foggy city. Huh? London is praised for being the brightest, most prosperous imperial city capital of all. However, as the flame of London burns brighter and brighter, the shadow cast by its light grows into an ever greater darkness. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I'm sure you'll find out for yourself in due time, just how deep the darkness goes. Oh, uh, that, that totally means that, uh, that, uh, one guy, what is, who is it? This guy. I bet, it, I bet it means that there is some corruption, right? And I'm, I'm, this guy's gonna totally end up being evil, right? Let's just, just be honest. Heart Vortex. He's got, look, he's got that damn Gant look about him. Now, I believe this bears repeating. Welcome to London, Master Arahoda. Aw. Oh. At that point, there was no way I could have truly understood Mr. Holmes' words. Now, it would be just a short while longer before I would peer into an, uh, the abyss with my own eyes. The abyss. Oh, that was it. No, uh, no death yet. Yet. Hmm. Okay. That leaves only one more as the final one. Venture the unspeakable story, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Oh, that's... Isn't that a classic, The Hound of the Baskervilles? I think so. It was like a classic Sherlock Holmes story. That was good, though. I, I really enjoyed that case. These, it's just... Yeah, this game's just gotten fucking better. It just, just keeps getting better and better. I... There was a lot of really, like, tender moments there. We... About... With all the characters, with Pat and his wife. Van Zeke showing he was a fucking boss. Sherlock Holmes and his contributions... Uh, I really enjoyed the look into London life, too, because they did a really great job of incorporating it into the main plot of the case. So we had to sort of see that, oh, this is why Pat's so tired. This is what the the London constables are doing and uh, what daily life is like around uh, town for the random people about the, the need to have a maid just to, to appear like you're at least relatively middle class, you know? And if you're not, you're seen as lower class. That affects how much you receive payment. Like, just so much of that stuff really was just effortlessly put into here, and it just was so delightful. I'm... Mm, good stuff. Just fucking great stuff. Um, and man, it's like... I'm bummed now. I'm bummed because it feels like we're really, like... You, you can actually feel how this is a bit different than any of the previous games in that it's a duology, right? Where... Because the, the story is moving more slowly, I guess. Like, the fact that I'm getting my office, but on the fourth case, now the, fi the final case is next, and then that's gonna be it. Um, I'm sure it's getting on a cliffhanger. I mean, that's that's how this is gonna likely go, which is probably gonna make the way for the next game way harder, but I am glad. I'm glad that I stuck with it, you know? Because I was really kind of down after that first case. Um, and, and then I'm, I'm just happy. I, I think if I were playing this by myself... I might have stopped, honestly, before I I continue with the uh, case two and beyond, and uh, it would have been a real shame because I would have really missed out on some uh, some great moments. And yeah, this game's this game's pretty fantastic. It's definitely going to be up there and probably one of my uh, top Ace Attorney games. I think by the time this is over, unless it just totally craps the bed in this final case. But I, 
I, these characters are all just so delightful by this point. I, I don't see that happening. But anyway, guys, I really hope you all enjoy this episode. This ended up being slightly shorter than usual. It's probably ended up being less than an hour. But uh, if you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're already become Pinky Penguin. For this LP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy!